We got it. <laughs> oh, hey, my sweet babies. Daddy, I need you to. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying to do. All right, y'all. We we here and we can already have one more conversation. But y'all know this technology shit. It throws us right. But we doing better because our Stephanie hooked us up and we not at the bottom of the screen, the top, one eye out. Right. And I got to say something to my baby. Um, I believe it's Kevin on stage. Listen, we trying to get the, the screen where it's balanced. Okay, baby? Because that baby said, how come they're down in the, in the lower Because we technologically <laughs> pitiful. That's why. That's why. Daddy, That's why, why we doing this live? We wanted to discuss because of some new events involving certain individuals that were speaking in reference to Monique and I, and we wanted to address this. And the acronyms for our discussion today are going to be TAT, T-A-T, -T. and it stands for Truth, Accountability, and Trauma. And, and before we get started, Daddy, I want to say something. Kick it. You know what? Oftentimes, there'll be some people that say, Mo, why y'all always be talking and why y'all... Because do you know one thing our community suffers with? is silence. We have been taught, keep the, keep the business in the house. Don't say nothing, don't say nothing. And then there's the trauma. Because what happens oftentimes in the household, we keep it in, we don't say anything, we stay silent, and then you live your life in that trauma. So the reason why we continue to have these conversations is because we taught us in our community suffering. And addition to that, there's a level of embarrassment that we've been taught to carry that started from slavery and that level of not identifying uh, when you have a problem because we've been taught to get through it so we could go back to work when sometimes we need to be working on ourselves and dealing with the trauma that we've experienced so we can be better when we do go back to work. The, the catalyst to this conversation was due to the conversations that we would have and have had in the bathroom. And <laughs> recently, there's a gentleman. His name is Vlad. And Vlad, since probably about 2018, and we're now in 2024, has been having individuals on his uh, platform where he wants to speak about me as a piece of shit, I'm a bitch, I'm all kinds of names that he used in reference to me. Now, this is typically the time that I'm supposed to come back with my chest poked out and I'm a clap back. But I want us to understand that there's a different way in which to approach certain situations because I don't take it personally that he said what it is that he said. See... My daddy has a way of saying, you know what, mama? This ain't personal. Well, when you keep hearing your husband being attacked, and you know it's not true, and you hear people deal with us with their opinions, but they don't deal with us in facts. We deal with people in facts because our opinion doesn't matter. It's the facts that will always stand because facts are facts. Your opinion is just that. And you know what they say about an opinion? It's like an asshole. Everybody has one. So I don't take any, I don't take any of it personal. But anymore. Anymore. Thank you, Daddy. Okay, because you know that was a time. You had to talk me down. Yeah. But what I will say is I take it personal when it keeps attacking our community. That's when it's personal for me. And it's personal for me that this person is allowed to have a platform that oftentimes we're not speaking the best of one another and we keep signing up for it. So you want to start this now, baby? In, in addition to the, the, the truth, we in our community have to consider stop worrying about who the truth is told about and just accept the truth because We've been taught that based upon who that person is, you don't go against them because of what they can do to you. And what you don't understand, some of us, 
is that what we don't understand, some of us, is that if you don't stand up against them, you don't know what they're going to continue to do to you. You don't know the boundaries of us emboldening them to do whatever they want to do to us. And to me, that starts off with a story about Adam and Eve. Mm. But that's a different road that we've got to go down one day. But as it relates to Vlad, Vlad, I'm talking directly to you, my Caucasian brother from another mother. Uh, you've continuously made statements about us trying to extort you for the interview when in actuality, the only thing we were looking to do was make sure that you did not own Monique's image in all perpetuity. We had an interview set up with you that we confirmed on May 7, 2018, that was scheduled for the 11th of that same week, which is four to five days away, depending upon how you look at it. You did not give us the release form until right before we were about to do the interview with you when we had several days in advance to get that information. I was taught and we were taught that you never sign any documentation until you're able to read that and you have somebody read it over who you trust. You keep portraying it as if when we told you we couldn't sign it right then, you said, well, we allowed them or I allowed them to still do the interview. If you remember, you had your guy reach out for Monique, not us reaching out to be on your platform. So you were not doing us any favor in reference to allowing the interview to continue. You were trying to work it out for yourself. And when we had our attorney look at it, essentially, when we saw the language that you would own it in all perpetuity, which means once you sell your catalog, it was explained to us and we understood it as there was a possibility that whoever you sold that interview to, along with your others, that you owned in all perpetuity, they could cut it up and use it in any way in which they saw fit, which means we have no control over it. So what standard in the entertainment industry, when you go on different platforms, they give you a licensing agreement and they ask for X amount of time in which to use this and you either approve it or you don't. In your situation, we would have approved it. However, what happened was once we looked into or initially uh, were looking to give you the licensing agreement and you rejected it because you were like, you, you own it and what you did. And we were trying to have control over Monique's image. We had a chance to look at you and the interviews you had done because we didn't know you. We're going to jump into the conversation or the email that you last sent to me on April 2nd of 2022 that is different from how you've been talking about me recently. Mm. Might as well jump into it, love. You know what, Daddy? Before we jump into it, I just want to explain something to the baby. Do it. When you get to a place called Hollywood, there's no one-on-one. -on -one. There's no, um, let me walk you through it. Let me, let me explain to you what's happening. So that word in all perpetuity... I didn't know what that meant. I had no idea what that meant. So I'm sure there were times in my career that I've signed release forms not understanding what I was signing. It's just a release form. Till you understand when you sign that in all perpetuity, that means they, they own you. So I want to make sure you babies understand that's getting ready to be new to this business, new to the game. When they put something in front of you and say, sign this, if you did not go to school to read uh, contracts or release forms or whatever, that's not what we do. So put it in the hands of somebody that would know what an all perpetuity means. So let me read this, okay? This is from you, Vlad, and we got to talk directly to you because you seem to have a lot to say, but we want to let the community know what you sent to us. Sydney, in the spirit of Monique working things out with Lee Daniels, I would like to extend my hand and work things out with you as well. I apologize for what I said about you. 
I felt frustrated that other YouTube channels that did interviews with her were allowed to show the interview on their YouTube channels, whereas I was only allowed to have it up for a limited time. But regardless of my personal feelings, this was your business decision and I this was your business decision and the way I reacted was unprofessional and immature. I would like to offer her $5,000 for the interview if both of you sign a release form that allows us to keep the interview on our channel like every other channel does. Then he put Sway, Comedy Hype, Breakfast Club, etc. To which she's never signed a release form for them. Never. If that number doesn't work for you, I'm open to negotiating. I still feel that this is a very important interview with an Oscar winner that discusses both her professional and personal life, especially at a time when the Oscars are being discussed. Even if you choose not to accept this, I still take responsibility for my actions and hope that we can get past this and work in the future. Congratulations on your family's continued success. Now that was the email that Vlad sent to us when he saw Lee Daniels do the public apology. Now you wanna read the response? I will. And just keep in mind, the reason why we're reading this is because the energy that he's giving now has gone back to I'm a piece of shit, I'm this, I'm that, and all of that. My response to Vlad was, hello, Vlad. First, thank you for the apology. However, if your expression of regret is being made in the spirit of Lee Daniels apologizing to Monique, then remember he did it publicly. That's the same place that you ironically stated the less than flattering things that you did about me. So obviously, in being in alignment with what is right, wouldn't the best place to apologize be publicly? As a man, please know I took no offense to your name calling as it didn't make any sense that you would have disdain for me listening to our attorney as you listen to your attorney and I didn't begrudge you. What does hurt my heart though is that our community doesn't see that there are no black people who constantly bring white people on their platform to speak negatively about other white people like you do as a white male interviewer with black people. Come on. Your offer of $5,000 means that you missed the point with us, my friend. You see, we are principled individuals that are not moved by money. If spiritually, it doesn't make sense. When Monique says no to a major streaming company's offer of 500K for an hour of work or no to Tyler Perry who offered Monique money as his way of saying he was sorry for whatever hurt and pain he caused Monique, but she declined in exchange for a public, a public apology that cost nothing, then why ever would she slash we say yes to an interview for $5,000 or more with you? My purpose for stating the aforementioned is twofold. One is to say that no amount of money would allow us to do a show with you as long as you are a part of hurting our community by constantly perpetuating beef. Mm. The second is as a white man who dips into the black culture, it begs the question, why not use your voice and intelligence for the good of the people and speak truth versus trash, even if it may mean going against the powerful? You're a smart cat. Why not use your brains to be a bridge builder as opposed to being a divider of black men and black women? For the benefit of yourself and your family, please remember the universal law of return. What you put out is what you get back in return. And don't you and yours deserve the best instead of setting yourself up for beef? Mm. To that end, if you're going to apologize, do it the right way, publicly. Not for me, because I forgive you. But for yourself being that you and yours deserve the best karmically. And now you see why they say I am so difficult to deal with. Because speaking with people directly without being emotional, disrespectful, or argumentative can be challenging to deal with, especially when it's coming from a black man. Come on. All the best to you and yours. Sincerely, Sydney Hicks. Now, when y'all hear that, when y'all hear that, and that person has these emails because they went back and forth. When y'all hear that, and then y'all still say, but why? Why talk about it? Let me tell y'all something. And for the babies that's in here right now saying, why, why, then get out of here. You know why? Because constantly our community gets beat up and beat down, constantly. And we're okay with that. We're okay to stand on the sidelines and say, since it ain't happening to me, I ain't gonna say nothing. That's not who we are. 
That's not who we are. And we're going to keep speaking and we're going to keep speaking loudly and we're going to keep speaking up. So hopefully the next ones that come won't have to deal with this BS. Won't have to go through this. Hopefully when that when Vlad hears these emails that, by the way, he gave no response to. When he hears that, when you hear this, Vlad, maybe the next guest you have on your platform, you won't be so readily going after our black community. You won't be so readily, well, what about this and what about that? And what do you think about this and what do you think about that? And to our people, how many times have we seen white people on Vlad? And I'm not saying there's never been any. I'm not saying that. But how many times have we seen white people on Vlad and Vlad is going against and asking what they think about other white people? Why do we keep taking the bait? Or how many times have we seen black people bringing white people on that platform to consistently go against one another. It doesn't happen. So when our brother Damon Dash speaks about culture vultures, Come in on. our opinion, this is the epitome of that vulture to our culture. And to my baby, Michael Blackston, oh, I want to say to you, brother, thanks for not taking the bait because I, we saw him trying to bait you in. And what you said was, which made us look at each other, when you said, so why'd you give me the release form to sign right now as I sat down? Right. So you caught it. You caught that in that moment as he was trying to speak ill of your brother and sister. Nothing but love and respect to you, brother Michael Blackston. In addition to, there's a black man named Godfrey out there. Come on, daddy. We called him up because, you know, that's how we do. We call people up together. The same thing you see right here in front of you is what we do behind closed doors. <laughs> And we called him up because of the interview that he did with Vlad. Mm -hmm. And this brother ep epitomized what manhood is about. Not only did he take accountability and say, you know what? I was wrong, Monique. I've always known you to be solid. And I took that man's side and I really only did it for likes and follows. And that's on me. But then he went on his platform. Yes. And he made a public apology. That's how easy it is when you take accountability yes. after you've heard the truth. So that's the part of it, taking accountability. So when you we see individuals such as Tyler Perry, such as Oprah Winfrey, why would billionaires, especially Tyler, who called Monique difficult to work with, who helped perpetuate this rumor that helped her to get blackballed. You heard Lee Daniels on uh, uh, talking with Don Lemon in reference to it. We know it's true. Our brother Steve Harvey, he said she done burned too many bridges. I can't help anymore. But no one's been able to point specifically to the bridge that she's burned other than what she did here with Vlad and it's saying no. And for a black woman, and black women out there, they they gaslight you all the time. They want to constantly tell you how unimportant you are. Meanwhile, they need you. Mm. They need you. Mm. So don't give in. Don't be gaslit. Because for Monique to be so irrelevant and unimportant, this man has been talking about that interview for six years because of how relevant she actually is. And I'm going to tell y'all something, too. Mm. And it just took me there. You know why I'm going to keep fighting? And you know why I'm going to keep talking? I read Hattie McDaniel's story. I read Eartha Kitt's story. I read Ethel Water's story. I made it my business to read those stories. And all of them got the same story. And if you don't believe me, go read it for yourself. They all got done dirty. They all got pushed away. They all was told they wasn't shit. They was all told they need to apologize and do this and do that and do this. And those women left here by themselves. They left here with no money. And they left here knowing that they was fighting for a community and told them to kiss their ass. So for those of you who keep saying, Monique, why are you talking? Because damn it, the little girl that comes behind me, hopefully the story gets different. Maybe a hundred years from now, somebody might want to say something about Monique. I hope that little girl knows, God damn it, don't give up. Don't, don't let people talk shit on you. Don't be unafraid to keep standing. 
Be unafraid to keep standing. I'm so sick of reading them stories and all of them left here. They left here. Nell Carter, all of them left here. Shirley Hemphill, all of them left. Feeling like they wasn't enough. Mistreated. Mishandled. And if they do that to a woman who has won the awards, who is the first black female comedian to have a sitcom to go into syndication in the last five years, pardon me, to do what it is that she's done, what are they going to do to you at your job when nobody knows your name, nobody knows your plight, people are afraid to stand up because you're just a black woman. That's all. And black men, we got to understand this. Let us stop demeaning and going against our black women and then ponder why we get mistreated. What are we going to get treated like if we condemn and put down the very woman, the black woman that birthed us into existence? And for the black women, let me be clear, because I see some of your comments. God damn, you can see that? Baby daddy, because it's right there. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. When I see your comments and y'all are saying, why is he speaking? That tells me a lot. That tells me either, number one, you don't have a man at all. Or number two, you don't trust that man that you have. So if y'all want to know why he keeps speaking, because he's supposed to. That's what kings do. So for the ones that got anything to say about it, you've never experienced a king. Because when a king is talking, I don't need to talk. He's speaking on what needs to be spoken on. So for you empowered, independent boss, sisters, your guitar are going to be lonely even when a man land next to you. If you don't know how to treat him. And you've set no, no standards for yourself. That's why y'all have a problem with mine sitting next to me. I'm thankful that he's sitting next to me. I'm thankful that he says, you know what, mama? Long as I'm here, you ain't got to fight. Long as I'm here, you ain't got to. So for you black men out there, some of you, I'm ashamed of you. I'm embarrassed for you. Because when you put your mouth on a black woman and you start speaking ill of a black woman that you don't even know what you're talking about, I feel bad for the woman in your life. And I think that's a perfect segue, Mama, mm -hmm. into our brother D.L. Hubley, who I thought we extended an olive branch uh, the last time we had commentary in reference to when his daughter spoke out, the reason why we stopped and still offered to have a conversation with him to resolve the, the situation was not out of fear of his daughter doing something. It was out of love for you, D.L., because... It would be no different than the street we came up on. You might get in a fight with little Tony down the road, but you see Tony's mama coming down the street with them bags. You better go get them bags. I'm not tripping off of what happened between me and Tony. That's his mama. That's your daughter. So we weren't going after you anymore. We were, we weren't even going to bring you up, but you went on, what is it, Jason Lee? Yes. You went on Jason Lee's show, and you wanted to share what? that I am the cause of the rift between you and your daughter. D.L. Hughley, because you're too afraid to sit down with us, as we've said repeatedly, hey, brother, let's have a conversation and let's do it publicly because our community can really heal on how we can resolve this. But you keep running, and then you keep running your mouth. And after we spoke on you last time, I was like, okay, cool. But when I watched you sit there with Jason Lee and you said, Monique is the reason I have a riff with my daughter. You're the reason you have a riff with your daughter, DL. Stop trying to run away from the fact that you did not protect your baby. And let me be clear with you about something. I'm, the, I'm fighting for your daughter. Because I was that daughter too. That had a daddy that did not protect me when I told him I was molested. So I know what that baby's sitting in and I know what she's dealing with. And though she's a grown woman, I know the trauma that that brings. And this ain't no shit that I brought to the table. You did in what you posted. What you posted. I'm getting so sick of you not taking accountability or responsibility for your words, brother. Never would I try to hurt your family, your wife, your daughter. That's not even in me. Because she never said anything about them. She only spoke about you. I spoke about you, but it shows, too, the lack of manhood that you have to try to put it off on your wife and your daughter. That's the lack of man. And then I'm getting sick of you making these comments about who's daddy's daddy. And, 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 and 
as if I'm with a gay man. I'm tired of that DL because here's the one question I would ask you, brother. When you say who's daddy's daddy, who the hell is the friend? What kind of relationship did you and this man have that you would not protect your daughter? Maybe that's why your daughter's having a problem with you because the reality is setting in that you loved a man and you didn't want to inconvenience your relationship with this man. So when you get- Was it a man? His, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're right, daddy. He said his friend. So we don't know. We don't. And DL, see you keep playing. Who's the friend? Say the name to make sure that friend doesn't do it to anybody else. Who's the friend? Or are you still so in love with this friend that you're going to protect the friend? See, I don't mess with nobody, y'all. That's not how I'm built. But when you keep putting your mouth on me and you keep running your mouth, I'm not the one that's going to back down, D.L. Hughley. In addition, if you notice, Monique has not ever spoken in reference to anybody's business. When they asked her about Will and Jada on Tigger, what did she say? That ain't my business. When Kevin Hart back in the day was having his challenges, she said, that's my baby and I hope for the best for his wife and himself. That's none of my business. She only speaks about her truth. And when you got upset because she reposted what you posted in reference to you not protecting your daughter, consider re-looking at that interview that you had, I believe it was with Sway. Yes, sir. Look at the disconnect. Look at the lack of remorse that you seem to have had when you did that. In addition to that, think about the years that have gone by where you've made your living off of talking about people. From pastors wanting to put up a million dollars to box you, to fight you, but you from whoop, the whoop-ass tribe, but you went deathly silent. To Angela Stanton approaching you in the airport, as I understand it, you wanted to get security. From the black women who were ridiculed on Don Imus, uh, by Don Imus and called them nappy head and ugly. Nappy head hoes. Nappy head hoes. And you went on Jay Leno and you said, well, I'm not saying they hoes, but their head was sure nappy. Brother, you have a history of not protecting the black woman. Come on. And now it is embarrassing to you that she highlighted what you did in conjunction with the original problem being that you, she was on your platform, came to you after the young lady Jasmine played the game of would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom on or Corinne Stephens with a condom off? And then she comes to you and then says, Brother DL, what, what are we doing? And you say, that's just the way we do it. The problem is you can't be Malcolm X one day and then David Duke the next day. You can't be Mega Evers one day and then you Strom Thurmond the next day. Either you're going to be for your community or you're not. So the truth, accountability, and trauma, and the reason why there's a level of ease, and I'll never say a bad word about you. I'm only sticking to the facts. The reason why... People constantly talk about other people because oftentimes there is an unaddressed trauma that you've experienced, DL, which may explain why you're sitting on a man's platform in a clear daylight with dark shades on. Maybe. But at the end of the day, you've had a history of not protecting the black woman, brother. And that's what she's addressing. So when she said, essentially, I feel sorry for your daughter, I feel sorry for your mother. His I mean, your wife, do you not understand why? And there are other items that happened that took place. But how do you nicely speak about the infidelities? How do you nicely address those infidelities? And then your wife, as I understand it, finding out about a child that you had and that was lost. And once she found out about it, that child no longer existed. Now, some will say, oh, that's slow. That's the problem with our community. See, when people address you with the real, you got to come back and have a real conversation. This is not designed to be provocative. We're going to talk factually. We're going to talk reasonably. When you gave the community a bad bill of goods, when Monique produced a contract and you produced a memorandum of understanding. Come on, brother. What I would ask our community is look up what a memorandum of understanding is and ask yourself, 
why would Monique produce a contract that shows she was the headliner of a show? And this man would produce a memorandum of understanding. And last point about you, Brother DL. I heard you on Vlad, we heard you on Vlad saying, I've done some horrible things in my life, but anybody knows me, that knows me knows I'm a solid cat. Do you not understand the contradiction there? Horrible things in your life, horrible. Not I may have made some mistakes in my life. I've done some horrible things in my life. This is what you've said. But everybody that knows me knows I'm a solid cat. That is a oxymoron in the highest of order, good sir. So what happens is our community is so used to hearing and not listening that they're not paying attention to what it is that you're saying. Go ahead, mama. I'm sorry, daddy. And don't get caught up by the negatives. We This conversation is for the positive. This conversation is for those that hear it. And for those that hear it, be unapologetic when you know you're standing in the truth. For those that hear it, be unapologetic that you are not backing down. Be unwavering, unflinching. Because if we continue to be that, it may stop the bully. It may stop the person that believes they're so powerful, I can do and say anything to you. So for the ones that can hear us, that's listening, be unafraid, baby, because we get one ride that we know of. Just one. That we know of. We get In one ride. In this form. In this form. I'd be damned if I'm going to let somebody take my turn. This is my turn. And I'm going to take my turn the way I see fit. Take yours, baby. Right. Take your turn. And, and, and I want to keep speaking to our black men. Because sometimes you can see our black men speaking so ill of a black woman. And you'd be like, brother, how you feel about your mama, your aunties, your sister? And you're just speaking so freely about something that oftentimes you have no idea what you're talking about. And I want to go there. Because when I, let me just say this real quick. When I did Club Shay Shay, you know what I appreciate about Shannon Sharp? And you have people saying, he's not a real journalist. He's not. What he is is a true brother. What he is is a brother that says, I'm going to let you tell your story. I'm going to let you tell your story. That's what Shannon Sharp is. And that's why Shannon Sharp, Club Shay Shay, is so successful. Because that brother talks to you with no judgment. That brother ain't trying to put nobody against nobody. He's simply letting you tell your story. And I think some people may have a problem with our, our brother, Club Shay Shay. They, they may. And Brother Stephen A. Smith, mm. this is directed to you. Yes, it is. When you come out and you say that Monique seems like it's bitter, your light seems to be them down. And um, I just don't understand. Here you go, brother. I'm going to repeat what I said to you before. Why was it okay for you to call Jason Whitlock fat bastards and other names? And Monique never referred to anyone out of their name. She said, I love those brothers, but she told her truth. Why is it okay for you to tell your truth that's inclusive of name calling, but a black woman can't tell her truth? And you being the journalist that you are, and you came on, and you said, I don't know what's true and what's not. If you were the journalist that you propose yourself to be, would you not have come on? after being knowledgeable about what took place before you spoke about it. That's what journalists do. They speak about what they know. They don't hypothesize. They want to speak from a factual place. At the very least, sources say type of situation. But you didn't do any of that. And now that this time has elapsed, did you notice that people haven't come out that she spoke about to dispute anything that she said? What reason would she have to lie on Kevin Hart? Love him. Told the truth about what took place. That brother loaned us or gave us 300 grand. Yes, he did. He gave us 300 grand. We love him. There's an old saying you can feed he him. gave it to us, but we gave it back. Not only did we give it back. With interest. We gave it back to him with interest. Even though he gave it to us, we were like, listen, brother, there is going to be someone who asked. We do not want you to be 
in a situation where you have less because of us. In fact, we want to make sure you have more because of what you did and how we appreciate that. We weren't embarrassed by that. This is what happens when you get lied about in this industry by a man named Tyler Perry who says you're difficult and then things would seem to dry up. Again, we got to stop being embarrassed about what really took place. So when Stephen A. Smith, have you heard the audio yet of Tyler Perry yet? Have you asked your friend, uh, uh, Kevin Hart, who, again, this brother is blowing up. We want him to win the whole nine. But when you constantly hear an individual speaking about that they are a brand, the only thing is, what good is it to be a brand if you lose your man and you let an individual who happens to be white, just happens to be white, and your manager get in the way of an arrangement that you set up with an individual you call your auntie? You tell them they like your mother but then they don't get back to you in reference to it. So we're wrong and she's wrong for having a discussion about the truth. The I mean, truth. The truth. I mean, mom, recently there was an outreach for her to do an interview with him. And she said, I'm not doing an interview with him through you. You, I'm coming to you, Kevin, and I'm speaking to you, Kevin, and reached out to Kevin and said, Hey brother, through text, why is it that you would have somebody reach out to me for an interview when all you got to do is reach out? Sometimes you can be so big that you don't even know what's going on in your own affairs. And he said, no one from my team reached out for, to you. Well, guess what? They did. And we gave him the name and the individual. And I called her back to confirm she was who she really was. And that's who she was. So again, what were and we then say? once we gave him that information, we no longer heard back from him. So here's what I'm saying too for the babies that's listening: that want to come into this business. When you get into this business, don't lose yourself. Don't. Don't lose yourself, baby. Don't have people that knew you for a long time. When you come around again, they have no idea who you are. Don't lose yourself. I'm not saying don't change because change can be good. Change can be good when you're learning new things and different things. And you might say, you know what? I want to be a better person. Not saying it at all. What we're saying is don't lose yourself. And we know people that's lost themselves. And now everything becomes so grand and so, you know, so out there. And you're like, what you talking about? What happened to us just sitting on having some french fries and some chicken wings and having real conversation? So for you babies that want to get into this business... It's a business to get into. Don't lose you. And don't let nobody convince you of what you know to be wrong, but you want to act like it's right. If it's a duck, if it look like a duck and quack like a duck, some people in Hollywood would say, that's really a rabbit. And you know damn well it's a duck. Don't you change your mind and say it's a rabbit too. And that's in any industry that you are in. D don't change who you are because if you do, you won't get the opportunity to run into true folk like Cat Williams. Mm. True folk like Mark Curry. True folk that? like Tommy Davidson. Come on. True folk like Zoo Man. Come on. True folk like Red Grant mm. and the others on that Dark Matter tour. And when you walk out, see, this is the part for me that I love seeing through video because I got to hold it down at the crib. But Seeing it through the video that this man, Cat Williams, commands 10,000, 12,000, 14,000 people. And she walks out and they stand up. So you might not be loved in Hollywood, but there's something about being loved by your people. Come on, Daddy. I, I want to say this about our brother Cat Williams. Through the years, I would always hear things about Cat. He don't show up to shows. He ain't this. He ain't that. He ain't this. That's one of the purest cats in this game. That cat right there named Cat Williams. See, I know stories about this brother. And I said to Cat, do you mind if I share this? And he said, Monique, I can't stop you from saying what you want to say. See, for the ones that talk ill about Cat Williams and all he's not doing, they can't touch him. Because there was a woman named Yvette Wilson. 
who played Endell on the Parkers. And when Endell took ill, it was a man named Cat Williams that stepped in and took care of that sister till she left this earth. But they won't tell you all that story about him. They won't tell you the story that when I walk into that production, that brother takes care of his folks. And when you hear the DJ, DJ say, Monique, I've been with Cat for six years. And this person say, I've been with Cat for this many years. And that, that means loyalty. That means somebody treating you right. So don't believe everything you hear if you can't see it for yourself. And what I see when I go into that Dark Matter tour, every weekend I see people that love that five foot five giant. They love that man. So sometime when Hollywood say, you ain't enough, you ain't good. When the people, when your people say you enough, that's all you need, my babies. And the piggyback on what you're saying, Mama. Let me tell you how Brother Cat is a, such a gangster mm. in the best of ways. When we worked out the deal for Monique to go on the Dark Matter tour, he didn't send me to his people. Mm. He said, man, let's me and you work this out. And when I tell you, in about five minutes... What was conveyed and done normally takes, you know, a bit longer than that. And the reverence and the flowers that he has bestowed on Monique, just a gentleman. Just a gentleman. A gentleman. And everybody on that tour had the same energy. Everybody cheering everybody on. Everybody is happy for everybody. So this weekend in Dallas, Texas, and in New Orleans. Come on now. <laughs> Y'all come on out, baby. Get some of this good good. Because that's all it is. It's good good. And for the babies that's coming in this business, get around people that's pure. Get around people that's, this right here is pure. That's the people you want to mess with. The people you want to be around is the people that's going to tell you the truth. Even if it don't feel good to you. But they're going to tell you the truth. Because they want you to be better. So for you babies, that, I want to go to Hollywood. I understand it because I was like that too. But let this stay pure. And, and it'll be good. And Hollywood is just a, a, a macrocosm, a microcosm of the world we live in. Nothing happens more special in Hollywood than what's happening in your life. It's just that the world knows about it in a way that you might not know about it if you work at Bragg or Gutman's. Mm -mm, Daddy, don't nobody know about Bragg or Gutman's. Hey, the people in Baltimore know it on my industry. <laughs> Bragg or Gutman's, baby. Come on. So it, the, the bottom line is don't lose yourself no matter where you are. And we're not only going to address who doesn't act right, but those that do. So we got to highlight both sides. And we want to end, if you will, with the last cat. His name is Gary Owens. Mm -hmm. Okay, Gary Owens is an individual who Monique has never said anything about an unkind word or anything, but he has felt the need to jump in and speak in reference to Monique. And what's funny is oftentimes you're having comedians who are speaking ill about Monique who haven't accomplished what Monique has accomplished, but because it's a black woman and it's so easily too easy to demean them because of the lack of relevance our society will have for them, they get away with it. You would never hear a, a center uh, trying to demean Shaq and what he did in the game of basketball that hasn't accomplished what Shaq has accomplished. They, they, they would be crazy. But a black woman is completely different. So when I hear, we hear uh, Brother Gary Owens speaking in reference to uh Monique and Sydney, they always talking about, we love you, we love you. Then they'll say something that nobody knew that's hard, like, but but we knew when y'all had an abortion. What? What? Now, this is where people say, oh, Monique, Gary Owens, let me tell you something. If you spent the same <laughs> energy, the same energy with your black wife, you may not have room to speak about nobody else. But when your wife came out or ex-wife came out and said, you mistreated her and those kids. You know why you were so easily able to get away with it? Because she's a black woman. 
Gee, I wanted the opportunity to say that. But I'm sorry, Daddy. Oh, no, no, that's all right, Mother. I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, do you think the time that you've used to focus on Monique telling her truth, like about Will Packer, did you go investigate and did you notice the trailers that blew up? I know he you speaking about that. Did you listen to the, uh, I feel like Ozzy uh, uh, Davis when he said, did you know Brother Malcolm? <laughs> it's like, did you listen to the audio of Tyler Perry? I didn't hear you speaking about that. I just keep hearing you demean uh, and, and want to speak ill of Monique. And, and again, to piggyback on what my mama say, uh, do you think it would be more beneficial or would have been more beneficial to you to use that energy to not focus on my black woman and focus on the black woman you used to have that was your entryway into this community that gave you the guest pass. And now with the guest pass, it's as if you feel like you're at home so much that you're starting to wear out your welcome, kicking up your feet when you're just a guest. You're a guest in our business because at the end of the day, what you don't know is, even with Will Packer, nothing but love because there was a white man on the set that referred to uh, David Talbot and Will Packer as boys. And she pulled them up. And this is after they had the conversation uh, in reference to how he was handling himself. Because we from the old school, we can have a conversation. We can have a disagreement. We can have a fight. And then afterwards, we're going to say, hey, you want to get a sandwich? We're good. You want a sandwich? Because this is what people do. Like, we don't want to see nothing happen ill to, to Will Packer. What we want to do is see good stuff happen. Like, you open up your heart and you don't work for the individual that's going to take advantage of your people. Tyler Perry, we want the best for you. Because... In wanting the best for you, you would have had the courage to say to Lionsgate, I can't in good conscience go to this black woman and ask her to do something for this white company for free when she has no contractual obligation to do anything for her. I'm going to need a budget that I need to go in with her because you are writing checks out for people to get a new house, which is beautiful. You write checks out to a waitress for $3,000, you let people use your private jet and all of these things get out. But why is it the thing that was done in the dark has you trying to take advantage of a black woman? Why? And you know what makes it so easy for Gary Owens, for Vlad, to speak ill of a black woman? Because they watch some of our black men do it, Stephen A. Smith. They watch some of our black men do it, D.L. Hughley. They watch they watch our black men show a black woman no regard. So that's why it's so easy for them to speak so ill of us in front of us. And we say, mm, you should, yep. Yeah, yeah. So when y'all talk about the ancestors, what would the ancestors say? What would they say, Stephen A. Smith? What would they say, DL? What would they say about your behavior. And ask your mother, Stephen A. Smith. Mm. Ask your sister, Stephen A. Smith. Have they ever, your black mom, your black sister, have they ever been in a situation where it was as if they were to be seen and not heard? Mm. Ask them. Because if you start understanding that, then you will understand to start believing the very individuals that brought you into existence. So the reason why, again, when we hear people say, why is he here? That's like saying, why did that man open the door for you? At, right. That why is he opening your door for you? We've got to learn, which is funny because when we got together. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <coughs> when we got together, I had to say, do me a favor. Don't disrespect me. Allow me to treat you like a gentleman. 